work. This is the reading session in Kitely. And uh, you can see everybody who's going to read here today. And we're going to start with Shiny, then Eleanor, then April, then Vinay, then Moz. You'll all get the chance to read, okay? So Shiny, if you're ready, take it away. after the proper time and then eat a great deal more dinner than usual and sit in the hot sun on the top of the church tower or even anywhere else you become soon and straight strange strangely sleepy now Anthea and Jane and Cyril Cyril and Robert were very like you in many ways. And when they had eaten all they could and drunk all there was, they became sleepy, strangely and soon, especially Anthea, because she had got up so early. One by one, they left off talking and leaned, leaned back and before it was a quarter of an hour after dinner, they had all curled, run, and tucked themselves up under their large, soft, warm wings, wings, and were fast asleep. And the sun was sinking slowly in the west. I must say, it was the west, because it is usual in books to say so, for it fear careless people should think it was sitting in the east. In point of fact, it was not extremely exactly in the west either, but that's near enough. The sun, I repeat, was sinking slowly in the west, and the chicken slept warmly and happily on, for wings are closer than either down quilts to sleep under 
the shadow of the church tower fell across the churchyard and across the vicarage and across the field beyond. And presently, there were no more shadows, and the sun had set, and the wings were gone, and still the children slept, but not for long. Twilight is very beautiful, but it is chilly, and you know, however sleepy you are, you wake up soon enough if your brother or sister happens to be up first and pulls your blankets off you. The four wingless children shivered and woke, and there they were, on the top of a church tower in the dusky twilight, with blue, blue stars coming out by ones and twos and tens and twenties uh, over their heads, miles away from home, with three and three half pence in their pockets and a doubtful act about the necessities of life to be accounted for it for if anyone found them with the soda water siphon. Well done. They looked well at done. Okay, so um, bear with me one second, just one word. And you get a smiley as well. Okay, so um, first of all, the word party. 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 Yeah, what you're saying is party. But it's not that, the, the beginning isn't party. It's party. Party. That's better, yes. Yeah. So you've got to get the T, but you've also got to have the R, but not too long. Party. Unless you're going, party. <laughs> Normally we go, party, 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 party. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then the name of one of the children is Anthea. 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 That's it, yeah. We've we've got feedback on our speakers actually here, Shiny. Have you, are you using a headset, Shiny? No. Ah, try to use a headset because otherwise we'll get this feedback. Okay. Anyway, the next one, again, it's the stress. Your your pronunciation's fine, but the stress is a bit off. Children. Children. That's better. That's better. Then again, stress. Twilight. Twilight. Yay, very good. And the last one, it's a siphon. Siphon. Yay. Good. 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 Soda siphon. Um, you normally you wouldn't have one in the house anymore, but you might find one in a pub if you ask for a cordial with soda. They have these soda siphons. They're like bottles but with pressurized water in them. And then you get a smiley for wigs and wings. It was wings, you're quite correct. Um, wing, wing, that wing sound. Wig, of course, is um, if you have no hair, you might wear a wig on your head. Like judges, yes. Like uh, judges, remember, has got a G in judges. Judges wear wigs as well, absolutely. Okay, any questions? Who knows, but uh, I did a test shiny and it turned out that uh, uh, I am more intelligent than Mr. Trump and I'm very proud of myself, really. The test was in French. <laughs> I put the results on Facebook. Okay, but, I, 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 uh, I don't said... want to talk about him. <laughs> Please. Oh, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, sorry, it's my fault. Oh, sorry. <laughs> No, 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 I refuse. I'm not going to start my Monday by talking about him. <laughs> okay, no, no other questions apart from about him. <laughs> Everybody clear?
Okay, welcome to Bunvesh. I hope you can hear us. Uh, Bunvesh, did you want to read today? Or did you just want to listen? Okay, you are typing, so I guess you just want to listen. <laughs> ah, hello, Buff. Okay, I can, I can, I did think you might be, but I can only go by um, what I see in front of me. Buvnesh is what I see as your name. But Buff, hello. Okay, so um, I'll let uh, Buff decide whether. Yeah, OK, it's, it, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but wow, you've managed more than many people. You can hear me, you're in world and you've learned how to sit. So, <laughs> hey, that's more than most people learn in the first hour or two. Well done. <laughs> OK, so Eleanor, you're on my reading, the, on my reading list next. Um, OK, so I'll just put the link up again. We're reading from this book, Buff. And we're on page 130, well, 140 now. Okay. Okay, so, um, Eleanor, whenever you are ready. Mm, ah, I'm ready. I'm always ready. <laughs> they looked at each other. Siri spoke first, picking up the siphon. We'd better get along down and get rid of this beastly thing. It's dark enough to leave it on the clergyman's doorstep. I should think. Come on. There was a little turret at the corner of the tower, and the little turret had a door in it. They had noticed this when they were eating, but had not explored it as you would have done in their place. Because, of course, when you have wings and can't explore the whole sky, those seem hardly worth exploring. Now, they turned towards it. Of course, said Siri, this is the way down. It was. But the door was locked on the inside. And the world was growing darker and darker. And they were miles from home. And there was a soda water siphon. I shall not tell you whether anyone cried, nor if so, how many cried, nor who cried. You will be better employed in making up your minds what you would have done if you had been in their place. Chapter 5. No Wings Whether anyone cried or not, there was certainly an interval during which none of the party was quiet itself. When they grew calmer, Antia put her handkerchief in her pocket and her arm round Jane and said, It can't be for more than one night. We can signal with our handkerchiefs in the morning. They'll be dry then and someone will come up and, and let us out. And find a siphon, said Siri gloomily, and we shall be sent to prison for stealing. You said it wasn't stealing. You said <clears throat> you said you were sure it wasn't. I'm not sure now, said Siri shortly. Let's throw the thing away among the trees, said Robert. Then no one can do anything to us. Oh yes, Siri's love was not a light-hearted one, and hit some chap on the head and be murderous as well as as the other thing, but we can't stay we can't stay up here all night, said Jane. I want my tea. You can't want your tea, said Robert. You've only just had your dinner, but I do want it, she said, especially when you begin talking about stopping up here all night. Oh, Panther, I want to go home. I want to go home. Hush, hush, Antia said. Don't, dear. It'll be all right somehow. Don't, don't. 
Let her cry, said Robert desperately. If she howls loud enough, someone may hear and come and let us out. And see the soda water thing, said Antia swiftly. Robert, don't be a brute. Oh, Jane, do try to be a man. It's just the same for all of us. Jane did try to be a man and reduce her house, house to sniffs. There was a pause. Then Siri said slowly, Look here, we must risk that siphon. I button it up inside my jacket. Perhaps no one will notice it. You others keep well in front of me. There are lights in the clergyman's house. They, they've not gone to bed yet. We must just yell as loud as ever we can. Now all scream when I say three. Robert, you do the yell like a railway engine, and I do the cooey like fathers. The girls can do as they please. One, two, three. A fourfold yell, then the silent peace of the evening, and a maid at one of the vicarage windows paused with her hand on the blind cord. One, two, three. Another yell, piercing and complex, startled the owls and starlings to a flutter of feathers in the belfry below. The maid flew from the vicarage window and ran down the vicarage stairs and into the vicarage kitchen and fainted as soon as she had explained to the man's servant and the cook and the cook's cousin that she had seen a ghost. It was quite untrue, of course, but I suppose the girls' nerves were a little upset by the yelling. Very good. Well done. Okay. Okay. So, um, nicely read and, gosh, uh, just a great big smiley. No corrections. Have you been practicing? <laughs> awesome. Well done. Yeah, I know. It doesn't happen often, does it? But, yeah, I, I don't know what to give you for that. I guess, um... Uh, but, you know, just, uh, just ask April. <laughs> but she is good at... <laughs> so the yes, child true. will be April, ever so... am I correct? <laughs> 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 That's very true. April sometimes catches things. Good, good, yeah. Let, let Eleanor have her. <laughs> uh, by the way, you can't say, I'll shut up, because you weren't speaking. You can only shut up if you're already speaking. Um, I think what you could say is, um, I'll, I'll say nothing. <laughs> so nicely read. Well done. Indeed. Well done. Um, which leads us, of course, to April. So please don't shut up, April. Um, are there any questions first about the text? Anything you're not sure of? Uh, what is blind cord, Lynn? Oh, the blind cord. Um, do you know what blinds are? Yeah, uh, 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 for the window, eh? That's right, yeah, the, instead of curtains. And the cord is the thing that moves them up and down, that keeps them open and shut, okay? Ah, just that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sometimes English is easy, you know. We... <laughs> so simple, yeah, absolutely. Okay? Okay. Okay, so um, if there are no other questions, then April, whenever you are ready, if you'd like to start reading. Okay. Uh, one, two, three. The Viker was on his doorstep by this time, and there was no mistaking the yell that greeted him. Goodness me, he said to his wife, my dear, someone's being murdered in the church. Give me my hat and, I th and a thick stick and tell Andrew to come after me. I expect it's the lunatic who stole the tongue. The children had seen the flash of light when the vicar opened his front door. They had seen his dark from on his doorstep. Oh, sorry. They had seen his dark form on his doorstep, and they had paused her breath. 
and also to see what he would do. My breath. My breath. For breath, I think. <laughs> when he turned back for his hat, Cyril said hastily, He thinks he only fancied it. He heard something. You don't half yell. Now, one, two, three! It was certainly a whole yell this time, and the Viker's wife flung her arms round her husband and screamed a feeble echo of it. You shan't go, she said. Not alone. Jesse! The maid unfainted and came out of the kitchen. Send Andrew to at once. There's a dangerous lunatic in the church, and he must go immediately and catch him. I expect he will catch it too, said Jessie to herself as she went through the kitchen door. Here, Andrew, she said, there's someone screaming like mad in the church, and the missus says you to go along and catch it. Not alone, I don't, said Andrew in low, firm tones. To his master, he merely said, Yes, sir. You heard those screams? I did think I noticed a sort of something, said Andrew. Well, come on then, said the vicar. My dear, I must go. He pushed her gently into the sitting room, banged the door and rushed out, dragging Andrew by the arm. Okay, just a, just a of quickie, yells. April, because it, it crops up quite a bit in this text. It's not vicar, it's vicar, okay? Oh, oh it's vicar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just so you know, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, he pushed her gently into the sitting room, banged the door, and rushed out, dragging Andrew by the arm. A volley of yells greeted them. Then, as it died into silence, Andrew shouted, Hello, you there? Did you call? Yes, shouted four faraway voices. They seem to be in the air, said said the figure. Very remarkable. Where are you? shouted Andrew, and Cyril replied in his deepest voice, very slow and loud. Church! Tower! Top! Come down then, said Andrew, and the same voice replied. Can't! Door locked! My goodness, said the vicar. Andrew, fetch the stable lantern. Perhaps it would be as well to fetch another man from the village. With the rest of the gang about, very like. With the rest of the gang about, very likely. No, sir. If this, uh, if this year ain't a trap, well, may I never. There is Cook's cousin at the back door now. He's a keeper, sir, and used to dealing with vicious characters. And he's got his gun, sir. Hello there, shouted Cyril from the, church, from the church tower. Come up and let us out. We are a coming, said Andrew. I am a going to get a policeman and a gun. Andrew, Andrew, said the vicar. That's not the truth. It's near enough, sir, for the likes of them. So Andrew fetched the lantern and the cook's cousin, and the vicar's wife begged them all to be very careful. They went across the churchyard. It was quite dark now, and as they went, they talked. The vicar was certain a lunatic was... Oh, the vicar was certain a lunatic was on the church tower, the one who had written the mad letter and taken the cold tongue and things. Andrew thought it was a trap. The cook's cousin alone was calm. Great cry. Little wool, said he. Dangerous chaps is quieter. He was not at all afraid. But then he had a gun. That was why he was asked to lead the way up the worn, steep, dark steps of the church tower. He did, let the, he did lead the way with the lantern in one hand and the gun in the other. Andrew went next. He pretended afterwards that this was because he was braver than his master, but really it was because he thought of traps and he did not like the idea 
of being behind the others for fear someone should come softly up behind him and catch hold of his legs in the dark. They went on and on, and round and round the little corkscrew staircase, then through the bell ringer's loft, where the bell ropes hung with soft furry ants like giant caterpillars, then up another stair into the belfry, where the big quiet bells are, and then on up a ladder with broad steps, and then up a little stone stair. And at the top of that, there was a little door. And the door was bolted on the stair side. Well done. Good. Well Thank done. You. Good job. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's have a look at the individual words first. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, the first word I corrected already because it was... Um, in the text so often I thought oh no <laughs> let's nip that one in the bud now so uh vicar okay yeah sorry vicar that's it <laughs> <laughs> and then you did correct this yourself a little bit later but uh, it was too late by then breath <laughs> breath yeah that's it I we breathe sure. <laughs> until we breathe our last breath <laughs> if you need to uh, remember that one okay you can remember that we breathe until we breathe our last breath okay and then um hastily it's, it's still doing that ha it's haste less haste more speed yeah less haste more speed and hastily comes from haste or hasten so haste, hastily, try it. Hastily, hastily, yes. hastily, that's it. And then this next one, um, it's really characters, yeah? So you've got the character, characters, okay? So you've got two schwas, characters. Try it characters um characters yeah not correct carrot characters ah characters that's it characters. good yeah. good yeah okay and then staircase with the long a staircase 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 yeah. that's it there's one word staircase staircase yeah i mean sometimes we say stairs the stairs so for example in my house it's a small house I've just got stairs but if you're in a bigger grander house or if you're in um, somewhere with uh, something quite remarkable it's a feature it's more of a feature a staircase really okay a features and yeah it's <laughs> it's basically um, stairs that are part of the structure if you like okay they're more surrounded a staircase a slightly different feature of a house than the stairs yeah if you were in my house i'd say go up the stairs if you were in what did uh, eleanor mention later oh, northanger abbey they have staircases <laughs> something grander and churches um this is a uh, now, what do you call them? The ones that go round and round. I hate them. The keystone staircases where you go round and round and round and up and up and up. It makes you dizzy. <laughs> then that, the that's what you call one, a staircase. Yeah. The spiral one. You know? Yeah, spiral stairs. That's it. Spiral. That's the one. Spiral staircase. Okay. And then um, the next one is just about intonation. Okay, if you note, and you wouldn't have noticed this until the end of the sentence, he says it in low, firm tones. Okay, so it means he's trying to sound manly and he's trying to sound firm. So he's saying it very clearly, quite slowly, 
and absolute with absolute certainty. So he'd say it along this term, um, sort of this way, difficult for us ladies, but not alone, I don't, said Andrew in low, firm tones. Okay, try it. Something like that. Not alone, I don't. Not alone, I don't. That's it, yeah. Much better, yeah. So don't forget when you're reading, if you suddenly realise, oh, you know, I meant to say that slightly differently, just go back, reread it. We're not in a hurry, okay? And then here we've got this wonderful word, unfainted. <laughs> now we don't, it's not real. you can't really unfaint. <laughs> it's a play on words. So they're just being plain, playful with the word, okay? So what would you say... Uh, I think it's an achievement for a lady to be unfainted, am I right? <laughs> um, well, it, it's an impossibility because you are you faint and that's it. You have fainted. So you can't then unfaint. Okay. Because when you faint, you lose consciousness. Okay. Any ideas? What what do you do when you have have any of you ever fainted before? No. Ah, only only once. It was a, a very a stifling in a tram, uh, but only only once for for a short while. Yeah, oh, it's not very uh, agreeable, I would say, not at all. It's not. But, uh, it's you, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 can you say you, you come to yourself, uh, for example? You're getting there. You can come, we, we don't say to yourself, you can say you can come round, to come round. Ah, okay. okay. She came round. Uh, yeah, exactly, Mars. If you, if you, uh, straight um, at the top of a mountain or at the top of a of tall building and you look over, then you might feel faint. You can also feel faint, as in you feel dizzy and you think, oh, I don't like it. Yeah. But if you actually faint, you lose consciousness. So when you um, when you come round, yeah, you regain consciousness to regain consciousness. Okay. Oh, I can't spell. Here you are, to regain consciousness. But of course, it would sound, you know, she regained consciousness would sound a little bit um, pompous in this context. It's a children's book, remember? So she's put this word in, she unfainted. I just wanted to make you clear, you don't unfaint. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> new word for you. Good. Well, that's why you're here, Moz. You're here to collect new words. <laughs> And then you get a smiley for lead, not lead. Lead is the material, the metal, and lead to lead is the verb. Okay. Any questions before we move on? Uh, no questions, thanks. Okay. I got it. I might write some words up for fainting in the forum. Don't forget, you can check all your corrections here on the forum. Okay, so I might I might read some. Uh, I might write some words for faint because it's quite a complicated little word. Okay, and it has more than one meaning. Faint. So have a check of the forum for that. So, uh, Vinay, you are next. Can I hear you? Can you hear me? Yes. Can yes, you? yes, I can hear you. Can, you. can you hear me? Yeah, be nice and clearly. Awesome. Okay, so Vinay, as soon as you're ready, if you would like to start reading. Okay, I'm ready. 
the cook's cousin who was a gamekeeper kept at the door and said hello you there the children were holding on to each other on the other side of the door and trembling with anxiousness and very fast the boys they could hardly speak but she managed to reply asking hello you there how did you get up there it was you saying we fever so cyril said and then we found the door was locked and we get down let us out to how many of you are there asked the keeper only four said cyril i am i will walk i have got my gun handy so you would best not try any tricks said the keeper if we open the door will you promise to come quietly down and no nonsense yes oh yes said all the children together yes me said the keeper surely that was a female voice shall i open the door sir said the keeper and do went down a few steps to leave room for others he said afterwards yes said the keeper open the door remember he said through the keyhole we have come to release you you will keep your promise to refrain from well as how this boy do stick said the keeper anyone you think it had been drawed for half a year as a matter of fact it hadn't when all the balls were drawn the keeper spoke digested words through the keyhole i don't know said he still you have go over to the other side of the tower and if one of you comes at me i fire now we are we are all over on the other side said the voices the keeper felt peace with himself and on himself a bold man when he threw open the door and stepped out into the leads plus the full light of the ta- uh, stable lantern on the group of desperados standing against the parapet on the other side of the tower he lowered his gun and he nearly dropped the lantern so help me he cried if they are if they ain't a pack of kiddies the wicker now advanced how did you come here he asked severely tell me at once oh take us down said jen catching at his coat and we shall tell you anything you like you won't believe us but it doesn't matter oh take us down the others crowded round him with the same entreaty all but cyril he had enough to do with the soda water siphon which would keep slipping down under his jacket i needed both hands to keep it steady in its place but he said standing as far out of the out of the lantern light as possible please do take us down so we were taken down it is not it is no joke to go down a strange church tower in the dark but the only serial had to be independent because of the soar siphon it would keep them to get over how they found the leader it all must get serial caught it by its spout and as nearly as possible lost his footing he was greatly pale when at last they reached the bottom of ending stage and stepped out to the stones of the church force they suddenly the keeper caught cyril and robert each by an arm you bring along the jail sir said he andrew you and andrew can manage them let go said cyril we aren't running away we haven't heard your old church leave go you just come along said the keeper and cyril dared not approach him with violence the coach just then the siphon began to slip again so they were marched into the vicarage study and the vicar's wife came rushing in oh william i did you see she cried robert hastened to allay her anxiety yes he said he's quite safe we haven't heard them at all and please we are very late and they shall be anxious at home could you send us home in your carriage carriage or perhaps there is a hurdle near where 
where we could get a carriage. Carriage, said Anthea. Martha will be very anxious as it is. The vicar had sunk into a chair overcome by emotion and amazement. Cyril had also sat down and was leaning forward with his elbows on his knees because of the soda water siphon. Very good. Well, but how did you... Yep, okay, okay. <laughs> I know, once you start, you can just carry on forever. <laughs> Excellent, well done. Nicely read, nicely read. A couple of um, corrections, but that's why you're here. So let's have a look at the individual words to start with. Uh, the first one is cousin, not cousin, cousin. Okay, cousin. Cousin. Okay, welcome to the world cousin. of, yeah. <laughs> welcome to the world of the schwa. So um, even though it's an I, okay, it takes this schwa sound, this un sound. Okay, cousin. Sometimes it's almost swallowed. Okay, cousin. But it's an un at the end. Okay, cousin. Try it. Cousin. That's it. Good. Yeah, good. Well done. The schwa takes every vowel. Every vowel, A, E, I, O and U, can be pronounced with this a uh sound. Okay, and it's one of the most common sounds in English. So when you see that little drunken E, this little backward E, you'll know it's a. Uh. Okay? Ah, it's pronounced a. Uh. Okay? So the next one, to be anxious, to show anxiousness. Anxiousness. Yeah, yeah good. Anxiousness. And then the next one is a soft S, not release. It's release. Release release that's it and if you need to um practice that in car for a karaoke session we're having one this week there's a lovely song called please release me let me go <laughs> please release me let me go <laughs> you'll find it on i'm sure oh yeah here you go it's engelbert humperdinck <laughs> i apologize but you've got to try this one it's, it's a great song it's a real classic yeah that's the one april <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, the next one is, um, this time it's, it's unfortunate, but as I said, lead is the metal and often church roofs or church roofs, as I still prefer to say, church roofs in the UK, they're actually covered in lead. Okay, so when they walk out onto the roof, they're walking out onto the leads, leads, okay? Let's. That's it, yeah. Uh, then the next one, violence. Violence. Mm, yeah, you're saying were. Are you German? <laughs> Actually, Germans tend to say fur. So <laughs> it's it's not were, it's v. You've got to get vibration between your top teeth and your bottom lip. V. Vroom, vroom. Like a car goes. Violence. <clears throat> Try it. Violence. Okay, you need to practice it. Okay, so what you need to do, because your name is Vinay in English, I'd say Vinay. How do, how do you pronounce your name? Same, Vinay. Okay, you get that V from your name, Vinay, and put it on violence. Yeah, it starts with V, not V. I, I pronounce it V. Yes, with a V, V. Try it again once more. Violence. Violence. Getting there. You need to practice it a bit, okay? Because it's one. It's a very common mistake okay. in a lot of languages. People pronounce the V as a W. W has the W sound, and V has the V sound, okay? Then the next one is that same word um, I think it was April had, hasten, to, to make haste, to hurry up, haste. So hastened. Hastened. That's it. Um, now the next one uh, is just about the stress. He wasn't asking how many of you are there, as in the opposite to here, okay? He's asking how many people so he's asking, how many of you are there? So not 
how many of you are there, it's how many of you are there? Can you hear the difference? How many of you are there? Yeah, how many of you are there? Okay, so it's how many of you are there? It's sort of how many of you am I talking to? Rather than how many of you are there? If you stress the there, it's like the not here. <laughs> So um, we would say it differently. So how many people were there? That would be how many people were at that place? How many people were there? How many people were attending? Okay. So for example, um, in this session, yeah, how many people are there? Because how many people are in this session? How many people are there would make no sense because we're all in different places. OK, so that's he's not asking how many people are in that place. He's asking how many. That's it. So it goes, how many of you are there? Try it. Again. OK. Yep, just try it once more. How many of how many of you are there? Yeah, but you're getting there. You're getting there. <laughs> OK, nicely. Nicely read. So, any questions? Anybody? No? Okay. Then I think Bov has had to go. I'll, I'll have to warn Bov that these sessions sometimes run on longer than uh, we put on the calendar. Calendars are only for guidance, they're not the be all and end all. Which leads us to Moz. Moz, are you ready to read? Hello, Aline, can you hear me? Yay! Okay. Yes, <laughs> excellent. Actually, I've just okay. noticed you look exactly the same as Vinay. <laughs> you got the same clothes, the yeah. same hair, the same everything. <laughs> uh, okay, Aline. Uh, okay, so okay. whenever you're ready, then, Moz. Okay, but how did you come to be locked up in the church tower? Asked the vicar. We went up, said Robert slowly, and we were tired and we all went to sleep. And when we woke up, we found the doors, the door was, was locked. So we yelled, I should think you did said the vicar's wife, frightening, frightening everybody out of their wits like this. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. We are, said Jane gently. But who locked the door? Asked the vicar. I don't know at all, said Robert with perfect truth. Do please send us home. Well, really, said the vicar. I suppose we'd better, Andrew, put the horse to, and you can take them home. Not alone, I don't, said Andrew to himself. And the vicar went on, let this be a lesson to you. He went, to, he went on talking, and the children listened miserably, but the keeper was not listening. He was looking at the at the unfortunate Cyril. He knew all about poachers, of course, so he knew how people look when they're hiding something. The vicar had just got to the part about trying to grow up to be a blessing to your parents and not a trouble and disgrace when the keeper suddenly said, asked him what he's got there under his jacket. And Cyril knew that concealment was at end. So he stood up and squared his shoulders and tried to look noble like the boys in books that no one can look in the face of and doubt that they come of brave and noble families. And 
will be faithful to the death. And he pulled out the siphon and said, Well, there you are then. There was silence. Cyril went on. There was nothing else for it. Uh, yes, we took this out of your, of your larder and some chicken and tongue and bread. We were very hungry and we didn't take the custard or jam. We only took bread and meat and water and we couldn't help it being so the kind, just the necessaries of life and we left half a crown to pay for it and we left a letter and we're very sorry and my father will pay a fine and anything you like but don't send us a send us to prison mother would be so vexed you know what you said about be not being a disgrace well don't you go and do it to us that's all we we are as sorry as we can be there however did you get up to the larder window said mrs vicar i can tell you that said sir said sir firmly is this whole truth you've been telling me asked the the clergyman no answered jane suddenly it's all true but it's not the whole truth we can tell you that it's no good asking oh do do forgive us and take us home she ran to the vicar's wife and threw her arms round her the vicar's wife put her arms round jane and the keeper whispered behind his hand to the vicar they all they are all right, sir. I expect it's a pile they are standing by. Someone put them to it, and they won't pitch. Game little kids. Tell me, said the vicar kindly. Are you screwing someone else? Had anyone else anything to do with this? Yes, said Anthea. Thinking of the Simon, but it wasn't their fault. Very well, my dears, said the vicar. Then let's say no more about it. Only just tell us why you wrote such an odd letter. I don't know, said Cyril. You see, Anthea wrote it in such a hurry, and it really didn't seem like stealing then. But afterwards, when we found we couldn't get down off church tower, it seemed just exactly like it. We are all very sorry. Say no more about it, said the vicar's wife. But another time, another time, just to think before you take others people's tongues, people's tongues. Now some cake and milk before you go home. When Andrew came up to say that the horse was put up to, and was he expected to be led alone into the trap that he had plainly seen from the first he found the children eating cake and drinking milk and laughing at the vicar's jokes jane was sitting on the vicar's wife's lap so you see they got off better than they deserved the gamekeeper who was the cook's cousin asked leave to drive home with them and andrew was only too glad to have someone to protect to protect him from the that trap he was so certain of when he wagonet reached their own house between the chalk quarry and the gravel pit gravel pit the children we were were very sleepy but they felt but they felt that they and the keeper were friends for life. Andrew dumped the children down at the iron gate without a word. You get out, you get along home, said the big courage cook's cousin, who was a gamekeeper. I'll get me home on Shank's mare. So Andrew had to drive off alone, which he did not like 
at all. And it was uh, the keeper was uh, was cousin to the vicarage cook who went with the, with the children to the cook uh, to the door and when they had been swept to bed in a whirlwind of reproaches remained to explain to Martha and the cook and the housemaid exactly what had happened. He explained so well that Martha was quite amicable the next morning. After that, after that, he often used to come over and see Martha. And in the end, but that is another story, as dear Mr. Kipling says, Martha was obliged to stick to what he sh what she said that the night before 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 about keeping the children indoors the next day for the punishment, but she wasn't at all ugly about it, and agreed to let Robert go out for half an hour to get something he particularly wanted. This, of course, was the day's wish. Robert rushed to the, to the gravel pit, found the summit, and presently wished for. But that, too, is another story. Very good. Well done. So I tell everyone on it because we were so close to the end. So uh, it's always nice to end on a, a, new, pla uh, a new chapter. So um, I'll put that into today's reading. So we're at chapter six next week. So much easier to tell people where to start from. <laughs> Nicely read. Only a couple of individual yes. words. Let's start with those. Okay. And very much towards the end, I think you were probably getting a bit tired thinking, when's this going to end? <laughs> okay, so the first one is to oblige somebody. So it's obliged, yes. <laughs> Try it. Obliged. Obliged. So, oh. <laughs> and then the next one, although we have a grave, which is a long A sound, you're buried in a grave, um, the little stones that you find sometimes on people's driveways and on beaches is gravel. Gravel. Uh, gravel. That's it. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, then... This one is just about intonation again, okay? It's just a sentence, and this is how you say it. When you're sort of giving somebody a warning, so think before you act. So what they're saying is, think before you take other people's tongues. Now that other people's tongues is a little difficult. So it's other people, but then it's the um, possessive, other people's tongues and of course here tongue is a meat okay it's it's it is pressed tongue was very popular back then i don't think many people eat it anymore in the uk but pressed tongue uh, which would come from beef or from um, yeah i think it comes from beef you could actually see you could buy uh, them and cook it Blech. horrible but anyhow people that's how people ate so try saying it think before you take other people's tongues Okay. Uh, think before you take other other people's tongues. That's it. Yeah, it's a bit like a tongue twister, isn't it? <laughs> Tongues, tongue twister. <laughs> okay, I just want to um, check everybody understands this phrase. Uh, I'm not sure if Eleanor managed to get this into her list of confusing words and difficult words. They won't peach. What does it mean? They won't peach. Any ideas? I mean, you all probably know that peach is a fruit. Yes. But it's not what it means in this context. <laughs> so we've got a peach here. Uh, sorry, who said that? To betray? Yes, to, be... to inform on somebody. So it's nothing to do with the peach, the fruit, and we've got on the table there. 
Uh, it's to do with to peach on somebody, to inform on them. Okay. They won't tell on them. They won't inform on them. Okay. And then the other bit, I just again want to check that everybody understands uh, in context. He says, I'll get me home on Shanks's mare. Now, usually now we talk about Shanks's pony in this context. Anybody know what I would mean if I said I'm going home on Shanks's pony? Um, I think it's a cut, cut meat uh, from Mama or... Nope. I think a shank can be meat, <laughs> oh. but Shanks's pony, no. No, I'm going home on Shanks's pony. It means I'm walking. Shanks's pony is your own legs. Okay, so, yeah, shiny, I know. I mean, you really have to know this uh, for it to make any sense. Now, we still use the term Shanks's pony, especially up north. Okay, uh, how did you get home? Shanks's pony, I walked. Okay. So when he says, I'll get me home on Shanks's mare, he means I will walk home. You take the carriage, I'll walk home. Okay. Any questions before we finish then? Uh, then uh, I'm curious about the uh, tongue. Uh, but I think before you take other people's tongue, uh, the tongue is is from the animal, right? Yeah. I I was thinking about the I was thinking not about your own uh, tongue, no. But like <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking thinking of the what what looks stealing like stealing somebody's uh, tongue. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, about the tongue from animal. I want to see it. <laughs> I was curious. Yeah, I mean, we have got we have got sayings like uh, bite your tongue. Yeah, bite your tongue, which means shut up. Um, but in this context, remember when they were in the church, if you look earlier in the chapter in the church, they took some cold meat. And in this context, tongue is it's pressed tongue. Um, in all honesty, I can't stand it myself. And that's one of the times I actually fainted. Um, but it is still eaten in some places. Ox tongue, okay? Uh, and you can prepare and cook one. Oh no, I can't. I can't share that with you. It's a video. Oh, okay. So, okay, here you are. Pressed tongue. It is literally the tongue out of an ox or cattle, and it's pressed and cooked and then sliced into sandwiches. So, if you ever go to an old-fashioned. Um, cafe or a restaurant and it has tongue sandwiches that's exactly what you're eating ox tongue yuck <laughs> okay and what is um square his shoulders Lynn? is it uh, that you really straight your sh your shoulder yes absolutely like the children in the class, like that? Um, well, if you square your shoulders, it's almost like um, you stand up straight and you try to look manly or to look confident. You square your shoulders, yeah? It's like putting your chest out, okay? Um, Moz, this bit is where they were in the larder, which is like, like a pantry like where, where things were stored before we had fridges okay and then he said um saw lots of things to eat inside custard pudding and cold chicken and tongue yeah so here it's like a cold cut of meat okay and to square your shoulders literally means to stand to attention and it can be to try and make yourself look more confident Okay, April. No, not delicious at all, Mars. Honestly, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. It used to be 
served to me at school and and in sandwiches at my granny's farm and bleh. it really uses tongue yes shiny <laughs> yeah you don't honestly the, you know we were talking about fainting before i was in a supermarket one day and for some reason i don't know why but they had a whole row of them ready to be taken home and cooked and they were just sat there and remember i used to be a vegetarian and i'm still very sensitive about eating meat and i just passed out i fainted buff flat out on the floor very embarrassing <laughs> but yeah horrible horrible idea horrible thing puts you off eating meat personally but there you go anyway some people think of it as a delicacy i just think of it as being you <laughs> any questions then i will have to go because uh, i've got i've got so much to do still i've got a pile of washing three weeks of washing basically <laughs> Everybody happy? Okay, thank yeah. you. No You're German welcome. less today. Lisa. Sorry, April. No German less uh, lesson. I no haven't German booked lesson. anything yet. No, I've got to go on. And thank you for the reminder. Yes, I've got my I've got my final test this month as well. So I have got to get back into it. And the stupidest thing being in England, so like three weeks before a German exam. <laughs> I didn't get to speak German once. In fact, I, um, when we got home and I switched on the radio, I was like, oh my God, I don't understand a word. <laughs> <Like, "Bleh." laughs> you happy, shiny, good. I'm glad. It was nice to be back anyway. And uh, I really missed, I really wanted to um, run the sessions actually for the book because I'm enjoying this book. I hope you are too. Anyway, take care. And I will see you in the next session. If there's anything you need, let me know on the forum. Uh, but I think I've caught up with all my correspondence on the forum at least. So uh, if you're waiting for anything, let me know. Because I, I think I've caught up. So <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Shiny. Take care. Bye. If anyone found them with the soda water sea sea foam. Well done. They look well at Okay. So um bear with me one second. Just one word. And you get a smiley as well. Okay, so um first of all the word party. 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 Yeah, what you're saying is party, but it's not that the, the beginning isn't party, it's party. Party. That's better, yeah. So you've got to get the t, but you've also got to have the r, but not too long. Party. Unless you're going party. <laughs> Normally we go party, 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 party. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And then the name of one of the children is Anthea. 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 That's it. Yeah. We've we've got feedback on our speakers actually here, Shiny. Have you, are you using a headset, Shiny? No. Ah, try to use a headset because otherwise we'll get this feedback. Okay. Anyway, the next one again, it's the stress. Your your pronunciation's fine, but the stress is a bit off. Children. <laughs> children that's better that's better then again stress twilight oh, and thea and jane and cereal cereal and robert were very like you in many ways and when they had eaten all they could and drunk all there was they became sleepy strangely and soon especially in thea because she had got up so early one by one they left off talking and leaned, leaned back and before it was a quarter of an hour after dinner they had all curled 
brown and tuck themselves up under their large, soft, warm wings, wings, and were fast asleep. And the sun was sinking slowly in the west. I must say, it was the west, because it is usual in books to say so. For fear, careless people should think it was sitting in the east. In point of fact, it was not extremely, exactly in the west, either. But that's near enough. The sun, I repeat, was sinking slowly in the west, and the chicken slept warmly and happily on. For wings are a cool. Well, this is the reading session in Kitely. And uh, you can see everybody who's going to read here today. And we're going to start with Shiny, then Eleanor, then April, then Vinay, then Moz. You'll all get the chance to read, okay? So Shiny, if you're ready, take it away. after the proper time and then eat a great deal more dinner than usual and sit in the hot sun on the top of the church tower or even anywhere else you become soon and straight strange strangely sleepy now closer than either town quilts to sleep under. The shadow of the church tower fell across the churchyard and across the vicarage and across the field beyond. And presently, there were no more shadows and the sun had set and the wings were gone. And still the children slept, but not for long. Twilight is very beautiful, but it is chilly, and you know, however sleepy you are, you wake up soon enough if your brother or sister happens to be up first and pulls 
your brain case of you. The four wingless children shivered and woke, and there they were on the top of a church tower in the dusky twilight, with blue blue stars coming out by ones and twos and tens and twenties. Uh, over their heads, miles away from home, with three and three half pence in their pockets, and a doubtful act about the necessities of life to be accounted for it, for 